Hey there everyone, this is Danielle. Uh, happy Trans Day of Visibility everyone. It's March 31st right now, which is the day I just said. <laughs> uh, Trans Day of Visibility, so yeah. Hello, I'm visible, I'm on the screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be talking a bit about Hoping in the Forgotten Land here. You may recall in my first thoughts video that I was really, really disappointed with this game's demo. Um, I still don't love it, but there are some things it's done better than I was expecting, and some other things that it's done exactly as badly as I was expecting, and there's a couple of things I want to talk about, so we're going to dive in and have a look. Uh, first of all, I don't know how long this game actually is. Uh, if you look at select file here, you can see I'm at 40%, but I don't know how far through the story that is, because there's a lot of side content in this game. Uh, uh, something that I would praise it for, in fact. Uh, there's, like, every level has a whole bunch of optional objectives, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm at 40% I'm through the game, apparently, so let's just hit continue. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is abilities. Uh, you may recall from the demo that your copy abilities can evolve. Uh, in the demo, it's literally just, you finish the demo, then you get to play with the evolved versions of all the abilities that you had in the demo. And I was unimpressed with them, because it's basically just a better version of the same ability. It, it, there's no, like, difference in how you play with it, there's no, like, a strategy or anything to it, but in the actual game, it is a little bit better. Uh, so the way you upgrade your abilities in the, in the actual game, how you evolve them, you have to come to the weapon shop here, and you can select which of the various evolutions you want. Each uh, power has at least two, as you can see. There may be, there may be three? I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Hammer, which I started with, uh, can be evolved to Toy Hammer, Fairly early on, you find blueprints in the game, which add options to this area. Uh, and then later it can evolve into Wild Hammer. Uh, and this is an interesting choice, I think, because Toy Hammer, as you can see, it's just a straight-up upgrade in terms of stats to the regular Hammer. So you would never use regular Hammer if you have access to Toy Hammer. But Wild Hammer, it does more damage, but it's much slower than Toy Hammer. So it's a bit, it's like it's an actual trade-off there. Uh, if you want to like, hit really hard and you think you're equipped to, you know, dodge out of the way and not get hit and stuff like that, Wild Hammer's a better choice. If you want a bit more agility, then Toy Hammer might be a better choice. So, you can see there's a bit of a trade-off there. The actual, like, powers are exactly the same. Uh, but, like, if I equip the, equip the, the Wild Hammer... You can see Kirby moves relatively slowly with this one. But if I switch it over to the Toy Hammer, like so, much faster. So there's like definitely a trade-off there between power and speed. I don't know if they all work that way. I believe they don't. Uh, for example, Fire here. Regular Fire has those stats. Vol Volcano Fire has those stats. And Dragonfire has even better stats, as you can see. It looks like that's just a straight-up upgrade. And there's just no reason to use either of these once you have that one. Uh, so, like, in some cases, there's a little bit of a strategy and planning involved, depending on what you're going to be doing. In other cases, maybe not so much. Uh, I don't exactly love how, I guess, difficult it is to get the evolutions. Um... To explain how it works, uh, if I go to a power I haven't properly evolved yet, uh, like I said, you get the blueprints, you just find these in normal levels. As you progress, you will find blueprints lying around. Uh, and like, that, that doesn't really require any special effort beyond playing the game. However, to actually unlock each, new, each of these new abilities, you need to spend both money, uh, which is 800 coins in this example, and rare stones, uh, which is the thing on the right there, three of them. Rare stones you will not get through normal play. You have to go specifically to uh, special levels that give you a rare stone at the end, and they are not part of the normal normal play. So 
you're gonna not have restaurants a lot of the time, unfortunately. <laughs> Which is, I find a bit frustrating. Um, I'll show you just on the map here how they work. Uh, so there is, there was one restaurant just like on top of this building. Uh, I accidentally went inside again. Uh, you get one on top of the building, but apart from that, you always have to go to what's called treasure roads. So if I go into the world map here, I'll, I'll just do one I've already done so you can get an idea of what they're like. Uh, that's not where I expected to go. Uh, I was expecting to go to the first area. So let's just go back. There we go. Uh, these are treasure roads. A whole bunch of them show up in every, in every world. Uh, uh, example that this one bomb treasure uh if you go in here it'll give you the bomb power and it'll give you like a puzzle like a challenge to do within a time limit as fast as possible it kind of feels like a breath of the wild shrine because they give you like these rewards at the end that you need two or three of to actually do anything with uh but the time trial is a little bit different so eh, it's not quite like that Uh, if you've evolved your powers, you don't get to use the evolved powers in this. It always uses the one uh, that it's been hard-coded to use. For example, I have Chain Bomb active, and I'm still using Normal Bomb here. Uh, so you can't come back with evolved powers to make these easier. They always work the same way. And at the end, as you can see, there would be a redstone. I've already got the redstone, so I don't get another one. But yeah, you have to do these treasure roads, which are not part of normal play. Uh, and you just aren't going to get any if you're playing the game normally, if you're playing the normal levels. It just never happens. Uh, so yeah, it's a little frustrating. Uh, these are kind of neat. Like, they're pretty short for the most part. Uh, and you get to use, you know, different powers and different ones. This one used the vending machine. Fire one over there. Uh, but there are problems with these as well. Uh, for example, if I go back to where we were... I can't, this, this one I've unlocked, like, I can see that the treasure road is there, but I can't play it until I've bought the homing bomb upgrade. Uh, it won't let me go in. See? And to buy that, I need to get three redstones from other treasure roads. So, it's, it's a lot of busy work. Uh, and I find that frustrating. <laughs> uh, just jump back to the beginning again. So, uh, in the demo, we had access to uh, the arrival level, whatever it was called, and then this one, Downtown Grassland, uh, and then this one, the Brawl of the Mall. Uh, these levels are exactly the same in the demo as they are in the full game. You get you get an identical experience. Except that you do carry powers over when you go into a level. So if you uh, equip something like Hammer or... Uh, what else isn't in this level? Hammer, Ice, Fire, anything like that. You can bring it to Downtown Grassland and you will have it in the level. It works like a normal Kirby game in that way. Uh, you can see every level has, these, has a set of optional objectives like this. This feels... I think a lot like green, uh, green Stars in Mario 3D World. Uh, the way these work, you always... Uh, I'll just go to a new level to make it easier to show you how they work. Uh, over Conquer's Inferno Road, there you go. Uh, whenever you start a new level, it tells you you get something... You get one of these for clearing the stage. You know how many hidden one of these there are, and there's a number of hidden objectives like this. If you do those objectives during the level, they happen, like they unlock and it tells you, hey, you did that, and you get the reward. If you finish the level without doing an objective, then it reveals what one of them is. So, worst case, you, you play the level like three times, so that, uh, sorry, four times? Yeah, four times. First time it tells you what the first one is, the second time it tells you what the second one is, third time it's what the third one is, and then the fourth time you actually do the third one. Uh... Usually that's not a problem because it does tell you what they are as you go if you happen to do the right thing, but you can easily not, so it can be it can be a little annoying. Uh so that's I guess the main part of gameplay really. Uh as you're saving the world these, which are all completely identical, uh it they come back to this town here, Bottle D town, and build it up and make it bigger. 
it feels a little too much like Origami King's Toad Town. Uh, you know how I feel about that game. If you don't, I, I hated it. I, I didn't like Origami King at all. Uh, but... Mm, it's not too bad, I guess. It would be nice if there were more indications of, like, what you're going to get as you upgrade. Um, near the beginning of the game, it had, like, uh, like a little sign saying 50 Waddle Dees to build this building, and you'd have, like, a construction site. Uh, and a couple of those showed up later in the game, but right now, there aren't any. But it might still say, hey, you got to 220 Waddle Dees, therefore here is a new area that you weren't told you were supposed to expect. <laughs> it's weird. Um, I, I think it would be better if it always had, like, some sort of quota you're working towards. Uh, like Mario Odyssey does. Because <laughs> in Mario Odyssey, it always, like, it always says, you know, you need X more power moons to go to the next area. Or to power, like, repair the Odyssey. Or to to unlock the post-game dark side or darker side. Like, it, it it's always telling you, you know, here's your reward for getting this stuff. And you want to press forward to do that, but here not so much. Uh, the stuff in town is mostly pointless. <laughs> like, the weapon shop here is very important. Uh, this place shows up first, as soon as you start the game, like this is here. Uh, this just lets you re-watch re cutscenes, it doesn't matter, because it's just cutscenes. It's nothing important. Uh, let's see. Over here we've got Kirby's house. Which is kind of adorable. Uh, the deal is there. You, your um, health in Kirby games usually stays between levels. Like if you've taken damage, the damage sticks around between levels. Uh, so if you need to heal uh, back to full health, you need some way to do that. Before um, and in this game, the way you do that is you have Kirby have a little nap, and there's a couple of different randomized animations. It's very cute, and that heals you to full health. Uh, it's super adorable. <laughs> uh, so that feels similar to the way the Odyssey works. You can also jump in here, which is, feels a lot like how the Odyssey works. Uh, and you can put little decorations up here too, so. Yeah, um... So Kirby's house is kind of useful, uh, the weapon shop is very useful, and that's about it. Uh, here you can buy food, but, uh, there's not really much of a reason to. You can take the food with you, like, so you can have a healing item on hand that you can use mid-level if you want, but I just, it's curvy, it's not hard. <laughs> it's just not necessary. Like, I'm in wild mode, and I haven't, I haven't needed any of this. I've not bought anything from this shop. Uh, over here, what all deliveries this is? Um, here you basically type in, like, mystery gift passwords, and you get random junk. Every time you use it, it tries to connect to the internet, even though some of the passwords you just find, like, lying around town and don't need to connect to the internet. And I've told it over and over, please don't connect to the internet. This switch does not have an internet connection, but it keeps bugging me anyway, which is annoying. Uh, these are kind of interesting. Uh, these items basically give you temporary stat boosts, so you can get increased defense, increased attack, increased speed, and you can just use them in any level whenever you want. Which is kind of neat. It's a temporary boost, of course. Uh, I forget what this is. Uh, this is Sultan Roll Kirby. Uh, I'm guessing I just like tilt the controller or something. Yes, I do. All right. Feels packed on. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so I get a more difficult board to play on. Alright. I, 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 I don't really care. Like, as you saw there, that just gives you, like, more money, and the money doesn't... You don't need it. Like, you have to spend a bit of it to do the evolutions, but 
because you need rare stones as well, and there's nothing else that's worth spending money on, uh, you just you're just not gonna run out of money. You're gonna have so much of it all the time. <laughs> uh, over here, this is the Colosseum. I think this is like where you can do boss rushes and stuff. That cost money? No. N no, it doesn't. So, again, yeah, I, d I don't know what the money is really for. <laughs> Actually, I do know what the money is for. The money is for this. This is something I was really worried would be in the game. Uh, as soon as, basically, I saw the little uh, gacha toy capsules in the, in the demo, I was very concerned that the game would have this in it. And it, it does. Uh, it has... These, these are called gotcha machines. Uh, they're just very subtle. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, it's, it's literally just put your money in and, and you get, you get, you get, like, gotchas out of it. I, I, I don't know why this is in the game. And it keeps unlocking more of them as you progress the story, too. Like, the first one here appears when you beat the first boss. This one appears, like, four worlds in or something and this one was like six worlds in seven worlds something like that and yeah i don't i don't want any of them i don't, I don't want them I don't want them in the game and you can see yeah it just adds to this like figurine collection that you have that doesn't do anything you can put a couple of them in your house and then you have figurines in your house that's it it doesn't doesn't do anything uh I, do, I don't like gacha mechanics. I do not like them. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, this guy? The wise Waddle D here gives you, like, some useful advice sometimes, but it also bugs you to connect online every time you talk to them, even though I don't want to. Uh, you can see, yeah, they help you find if you missed some blueprints, basically, which is, which is nice. And you get some random stats and stuff. Uh, I believe if you're playing online, then you get told how many Waddle Dees everyone around the world has been saving, which is kind of neat. But again, I just can't get behind save like hundreds of completely identical little critters because Origami King has scarred me. I, I, I did not like that game. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, what else? I think my main, like, like when I'm mostly talking about the side content at the moment rather than the main game, so let's get into a level and I'll talk about my problems with, I guess, the main gameplay. Uh, sure, we'll, we'll dive into the next, like, real level of the game. That works. Uh, no. Okay, here we are. Conquer the Inferno Road. Just go into this one and I'll talk about my problems with it. Okay, so first of all, you have almost no camera control. I'm tilting the right stick right now. I understand that that's like a decision that they've made, that the game works that way. Uh, because it is essentially 3D World uh, that we're playing right now. Mario 3D World, but Kirby is there. Uh, but... <sighs> like, 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 Odyssey was five years ago now? And that game had the perfect camera. You, you, know, you clearly have figured out how to make a 3D platformer camera that works. And this is not it. Uh, the other thing that I find really striking about this particular Kirby game is this. Kirby has a height limit. Uh, which is based on like the, the height of the surface you're standing on before you start hovering. And it's not very high. Like, you can see I'm not going up much higher than a jump takes me. And that's so weird. So weird. Because this is the only Kirby game, as far as I'm aware, ever, that has had the hovering mechanic and put a height limit on it. it it's just bizarre. Uh, there's, there's no explanation for it. And it feels so unnatural and... Compared to, like, every other Kirby game. It's just so weird. Like, um, I mentioned Kirby 64, I think, in my previous video. Kirby 64 did have uh, exhaustion like this. If you floated for long enough, Kirby would start, like, losing height. Uh, the classic, like, 
Uh, like Kirby on the SNES and the Game Boy and stuff did not work that way. You could hover forever. Uh, but in Kirby 64, you still didn't have a height limit. You, you could hover as long as you wanted. Uh, not as long as you wanted, as high as you wanted within the, the like, uh, limitations on how long Kirby can flutter. Uh, but in this particular game, you just have this weird height limit that it feels incredibly unnatural. Uh, and coupled with that, invisible walls? Uh, lots and lots of invisible walls. Uh, because the game, you know, wants you to go along the path that is the level. But Kirby games don't normally have invisible walls. Like, if, if there's a wall in a Kirby game, you can normally see it. And you go like, oh yeah, that's a wall. But in this one, uh, you try to hover, you know, over something. And you just can't because there's an invisible wall there. Uh, it's just... It's just very weird. Very weird decisions. Compared to every other Kirby game. Like, which is, which is really saying something. Like, because Kirby is a character who appears in a lot of games that don't play like normal Kirby games, if that makes sense. Like, uh, we got Kirby Canvas Curse, or if you're from the, the other regions, Magic Paintbrush. Uh, and then, uh, then the Wii U version of that game, uh, and then Kirby Tilt and Tumble, and Kirby Air Ride, and Kirby Mass Attack, and, like, yeah, we've had a bunch of, uh, there was another one, Kirby... There was, there was, like, Kirby's Dream Course or something, which is like a golf game where you're playing as Kirby. Uh, Kirby's a character who spins off a lot, uh, but tends to use mechanics that are familiar, despite spinning off a lot. Uh, and, like, this game is doing that. Like, I do recognize a lot of what's happening here, but a lot of it is just alien to the way Kirby games work. Even though so much about how Kirby games work changes so much, it's still out of place. And it's kind of baffling that it manages to be so. Uh... It's just... it's very weird. <laughs> I do like the way this was done, uh, with the boss arenas having visible walls, uh, because, yeah, like, in classic 2D Kirby, what would happen is the screen would lock, uh, if you were going into an area, uh, that you're supposed to hang around and fight a mini-boss. So, using these, these, uh, walls like this is a really good way to emulate what's supposed to happen, essentially. Uh... That's not what a lot of the parts of this game do. They just block you off in ways that don't make sense. It's, it's a confusing game. Uh, can I just... Yeah, I thought so. There's another bottle D. It definitely feels like a lot of the 3D world design sensibilities were invoked. But Kirby doesn't normally play like a Mario game. And... It's... It's insane to me that the developers wouldn't know that, because they're the same developers who make the other Kirby games. Uh, but... Yeah, this, this feels a lot like I'm playing 3D World rather than a Kirby platformer in terms of, like, a lot of the level design decisions, the way they've made stuff play. It's like, it, it doesn't fit. It's, it's just very strange. Uh, I'm going to die now because I don't have ice power anymore. Oh, there we go. Just made it. Nice. Oh. Why did you take damage, though? Oh, because I didn't surf directly onto it. Okay. Uh, what's happening here? Okay. 
So yeah, I just have complicated uh, opinions about this game. Oh, I wasn't supposed to do the story there. I was meant to use them as a bridge to get to get back. Uh, well, I've made I've made mistakes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, also, uh, in like not every Kirby game, but a lot of Kirby games, when you attack an enemy, their health bar shows up on the screen, uh, which tells you both how much health they have and what their name is. Uh, which is very helpful because it gives you a good idea of what all the critters in the game are called. Uh, this game, that doesn't happen. Uh, I, I guess the idea is that the gacha figurines tell you what things are called, but... You, you can't look at those during a level. If you press minus, you just drop your power. So... I don't know what to make of that. I think I'm supposed to switch to Ranger here. Yeah, I mean... Okay. Oh yeah, this too. Uh, so this is, um... This is basically the eggs throwing from Yoshi's Crafted World. Which I hated. Like, you're trying to aim in three dimensions using a two-dimensional control scheme. It just doesn't work very well. I take the sign... No, that doesn't look like it. Okay. Do I want to go the other way? Again, I would like more camera control so I can look around and see what's going to happen, but you don't have that in this game. You also don't seem to have a lot of powers that you would have in, like, a more conventional Kirby game. Uh, I think I mentioned Fighter in my comments earlier. Uh, basically, if you're not familiar, Fighter is a power where Kirby gets, like, a... Like, a, a sweatband sort of thing, and... Has martial arts powers. Like, depending on what button combos you press, it's, it's kind of like you're playing Street Fighter all of a sudden. In the middle of your Kirby game. Uh, I... And that just doesn't seem to be in this game at all. Uh, which is a shame, because Fighter is, like, a sort of a staple power in this game. It's been in a lot of Kirby's, and it's not in this one, and I miss it. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing there'll be something back here. Yeah, I was right. Uh, come here, come here. There we go. Okay, that got me the gotcha capsule. <sighs> gotcha capsule. And like uh, the mouthful mode segments, I'm playing one now, of course. Uh, I I think it's supposed to feel a bit like Odyssey's captures, where you know your move set gets replaced as you play. Uh, when you take on the abilities of certain objects that you find in the overworld. That, that that that's similar to Space Ranger. The Buzz the Buzz Lightyear evolution, I guess. <laughs> uh like I, I think it's supposed to feel like Odyssey's captures, but it doesn't. <laughs> it feels um it feels a lot like the uh the friend segments in Star Allies. Uh Kirby Star Allies had uh, like, these big pedestals you would stand on with a bunch of the friends you made by cap by, uh, out of your enemies, basically. Uh, and when you stood on the pedestal together, you would become, like, a ring that rolls forward all together. Just sort of holding each other's feet kind of thing. Or you could become, like, a friend's chain, which works like a bridge and you move it up and down to help something navigate back and forth. Or you could become, like, a bunch of friends riding on, like, a superstar vehicle thing and you get, like, a shoot 'em up segment, that kind of thing. It feels more like that than it feels like Odyssey, Odyssey's capturables. Uh, it might be because just the design of the levels is so linear. Uh, because in Odyssey, you know, you, you grab, say, a Pokio, you, you don't have to go forward with that Pokio. You can go anywhere. Uh, and 
you will often find things of interest if you go a different direction. Whereas here, you usually won't. <laughs> ah, I feel like there's too many cutscenes after each level as well. Like, it's got the new next level revealing. It's got all the Waddle Dees flying away. It gets checked off. And then it shows you treasure roads being revealed. Like, they don't have to happen individually like this in an unskippable way. It's... it's uh, I have a lot of complaints about this game. <laughs> uh, you may have noticed. What's this one? That's Wild Tower, which I have. That's Twin Drill, which I don't have, but I can get. Um, that Crystal Needle. Drill. Yeah, I'll do Toy Hammer. Yeah, um... Actually, these feel a lot like the um, mystery boxes, also in 3D World, now that I think about it. You know, you've got a time limit, you're trying to do some really specific challenge as fast as possible. You have, like, a specific intended set of abilities to work with, all that kind of stuff. I, I really don't like the height limit nonsense in this game. It's not good. Yeah, well, these guys are cool, but they're real scary. They go what most of the enemies are cool, because this game doesn't tell you. <laughs> uh, what's that? Oh, that beats the target time. Beating the target time doesn't really matter. It gives you a 50 coin bonus, but it's, it's not relevant. How much money I have, it, just, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know. Like, if it gave you a second rare stone for doing it, like, that would be worth it, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't do that. Got a bunch more locked ones. I do kind of like searching bits of the overworld, but again, this is 3D World's overworld. Like, we're, we're on a flying thingy, uh, we're, which I mean a warp star rather than walking, but it's more or less the same idea as 3D World's Overworld. The levels are completely linear, and you know, if you follow the same linear path, it's just if you go off to the side a little bit, you might find something you can pick up. Hmm. Uh, it's... Uh... Just as someone who didn't enjoy 3D World, uh, and did enjoy Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, this game... Kirby's essentially first foray into the 3D platformer genre. Being designed essentially like the game I didn't like instead of the game I liked. Just, just, it makes me sad. <laughs> Especially when you take into account that Mario 64, uh, a game which... It's still, like, beloved to this day, uh, was like Super Mario Odyssey. And that was Mario's first foray into 3D platforming. And it's still, you know, one of the best 3D platformers that there is. Even if the camera sucks, which it does. That's cool. See, this is, um, this is the, uh, Gushin, basically. This is the Gushin I'm using right now. But worse? You can't really see how much water you have left, like you can with a Gushin. To refill it, you have to, like, spit out all your water and try again. Just a lot more fiddly than it is in the other game. Okay. Oop. Oop. okay. I'm guessing I won't get the target time, but I don't really care that much.
But yeah, you can see it's kind of like a mystery box from 3D World. It's kind of a little bit like a shrine from Breath of the Wild because of how rare stones work, but either way... Not really much of an anything. <laughs> I, I just don't see what people are seeing in this game, I guess. Because I've seen people love this game. Like, I've seen people, like, ranking it among their favourite Kirbys of ever. And I don't get it. I just, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't think the level design is very interesting. I, I don't think the game controls especially well. Actually, I... That's something I wanted to explain in more detail. Uh, hang on, let me just switch to a power that lets me show what I'm talking about a bit better. Easiest way to switch powers if you're on the map is basically to go over here. Oh, this sucks too. Every time you get more than one, like a blueprint or even more than one blueprint, it shows you this message when you enter town saying the ability can now be evolved. If you have multiple blueprints, it shows you multiple of this message with the fan for every time. You, you can't skip ahead. Uh, but once you go into the weapons shop, he plays another cutscene you can't skip, where Kirby actually hands over the blueprint. And then there's this little pause here while the weapons Waddle D makes the new thing. Done. And then finally you can actually switch abilities like you wanted to. Like, you, you don't need two announcements that I happen to find a thing. <laughs> I probably don't have enough rare stones. Yeah, you need three. Hmm. Again, that one's a bit slower. I, I don't want to use this one because, um... Uh, that, 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 that design feels a little questionable, but I'm guessing Space Ranger is probably pretty cool. Uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to switch over to Pencil Drill because... The Drill, uh, which is a new ability in this game, I think... It basically works like the uh, the drill from Mario Galaxy 2? No, not really. It's not like that. The spin drill. It, it doesn't work like that. Uh, basically, you hold the button, Kirby digs around underground, eventually Kirby pops out on their own. Uh, if you're in the air, you press the button and you just sort of push forward a little bit. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It's mostly useful because if there's stuff underground, you can dig it up. Uh, but also... The button to do this, to fly forward like this, is the same button you use to capture something, to, to suck up something in mouthful mode. So if I go into a level that has something like that, uh, like the, let's say the vending machine, which is in this level here, you can be trying to, you know, fly past something you, you don't want to capture. And you're going to capture it because it's, it doesn't really care which way you're facing or anything like that. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, if I stand, you know, close enough to this and then I go... Okay, it didn't happen that time. <laughs> there we go. So I was facing that direction, over here. Uh, I was not facing toward the vending machine. I was going past the vending machine, and I still captured it anyway without meaning to. Uh, and this is especially bad with things like, uh, say, the water spouts, to turn you into a big water balloon, because you just you just gonna you're just gonna get water ballooned when you're trying to go through the level fast. There's not a lot of stuff in the game that depends on your timing anyway, so it's not the biggest problem in the world, but... Mm. Most things about this game's design just, just make me a sad pony. Uh, and... I don't want Kirby to make me a sad pony.
So, yeah, I don't really have a lot else to say, I guess. It's just, like, you can, you can sort of see... I guess, you're, I guess I can see what they were going for, and I think I can understand why people like it, but I just don't. <laughs> oh, I just have so many troubles with this game. Uh. And yeah, like, even the way the music switches as you go through like this, it's, it's extremely, like, 3D world in design. It... it it feels very much like they basically just wanted to make Super Mario 3D World a game which I found not good and disappointing and not much fun, and they wanted to make that game again with Kirby in it for the Switch. <laughs> I don't know why they wanted to make that game again with Kirby in it, but th that's what they did, and I don't love it. Hmm. <sighs> In fairness, I haven't tried the co-op mode. It's possible the co-op is really, really good. But I don't have anyone here to play it with. I am actually the only person home at the moment, so I can't even, like, ask someone to just drop in and have a go. <sighs> I suspect the co-op is actually not that good, because... Uh, I know that the co-op player is bandana, bandana Waddle D all the time. Hang on, let me switch to co-op mode and just... Is it going to be paired automatically or how does this work? They don't even have power. Okay, I'll grab these though. There we go. Oh, got a Joy-Con. Okay, yeah, Bandana Waddle D. I don't think Bandana Waddle D can actually get copy abilities. Uh... Which is a downgrade from how the co-op worked in Star Allies and all the other games. Uh, so I'm just going to make sure that that's correct. Because, yeah, I haven't played co-op at all, so that's just the way I understand it to be. Okay, there's fire. Can I get fire? Uh... I can't even go very far. Okay, the camera still follows Kirby, which I suppose makes sense, but I was expecting more of a, like, a multiplayer camera that tries to keep you both on screen. Yeah, Bandana World E can't copy anything. They just hold a spear all the time. They do have a jump replacement, which is kind of neat, because Kirby doesn't have one. But they, they can't switch copy abilities. And again, like, like I just said, this is a thing you could do in Star Allies. In, in Star Allies, you played as friends, which were just enemies that normally have copy abilities. Uh, basically, it worked like in Kirby Superstar for the Super Nintendo, for, which was a very long time ago. In that one, you could convert your copy ability into a friend, uh, and the friend they would have that power. And then you could give them a new power to heal them and, and like, stuff like that. Star Allies works the same way. But in both of those games, the co-op players had copy abilities. And you could combine copy abilities to do interesting things. In this game, you, you, you can't? I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't understand why it works like this. I... I don't, I don't get it. Also, Bandana Waddle D is not a name. Nintendo, let your characters have names. Don't just put whatever clothes they're wearing as their name, please. So, yeah, um, 
I don't like this game. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're not allowed to like this game. Uh, and I'm certain, I'm like, if anything I've shown here, like, maybe how the evolved copy abilities work. Like, if that looks exciting to you and something you might want to play with, or if some of the levels look like fun, then play this game because, you know, you'll enjoy it. Or you might enjoy it. Uh, but I haven't. <laughs> and the decisions that went into this are just um, extremely baffling to me. Can I even pick you up or take you with me in any way? It doesn't look like it. That might be by design, though. Because picking people up and throwing them places is, like, one of the biggest problems in 3D World gameplay. As well as a way to, like, avoid jumping and cool stuff like that. I'm not sure what this observation tower is for. It doesn't really seem to do anything. I guess you can sort of look at Waddle Dee Town a little bit higher up if you want, but... Why? It doesn't do anything. <sighs> so, yeah. This game feels mostly like Super Mario 3D World, a game which I didn't really like. With a dash of Paper Mario the Origami King, a game which I really didn't like. And... I'll, 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 and that's basically it. it. It doesn't feel very much like a Kirby game. It doesn't really seem to want you to use the appropriate copy ability for a situation. Actually, come to think of it, I should talk about that. Because it wants you to evolve all the copy abilities, there are fewer copy abilities in this game. Uh, to start with, I believe this is all of them. Like, I don't think there's room for any more. I, I think I have all of the copy abilities in the game, so there's barely any, and one of them is sleep, which is basically useless. Unless it can evolve to something that's not useless? I don't know. I've just showed you what sleep does. You walk really slowly for a little bit. Then Kirby just has a sleep. And then power's gone. That's all it does. <laughs> it, it does heal you when you have a bit of a sleep, but... <laughs> In, like, other Kirby games, like, more... Uh, complex ones. <laughs> uh, enemies that give you sleep are often used as obstacles. So you had to like get through an area without accidentally falling asleep, that kind of thing. Which was kind of neat. I haven't seen that happen in this game. I've only seen sleep just sort of yeah, tossed in for no apparent reason. Uh, there's an invisible wall, by the way. Uh, but yeah, like because there's so few powers in this game... Uh, and because you're you're encouraged to like work on getting like this rare resource in order to upgrade these powers and make them more capable, it it, it kind of encourages you to stick with one power as long as possible. Uh, do I have I only have two? Uh, like for example, because I have the uh, wild hammer evolution, like I may as well use this all the time because it's going to do more damage than anything else in the game, and there's very little reason to switch powers a lot of the time. Uh, which is... frustrating. Uh, granted, Hammer is often a good power in other Kirby games, but because you've invested all, this, all these resources into it, you're even more incentivized to use this for everything. Like, you can't... You're not going to be as interested in picking, say, I know Ice or Needle or Spark is not in this game, or Tornado or Bomb for a boss battle or something, because you're going to do the most damage just by using this thing. <laughs> hmm. This is, this is one of the many reasons that I wish more Kirby games had done the 64 thing of having power combos. Because uh, then, you know, you've got the set, like the same basic set of powers all the time, but because you can combine them together, you can try a lot of different things, and potentially you can solve problems in unexpected ways by using stuff like the turn into a refrigerator power that that game has. 
Kirby 64 had some really, really out there powers. It was great. Uh, I think that one is Spark plus Ice. Uh, if you got Needle plus Fire, you become from like a flaming bow and arrow. That was pretty cool. Ah. Uh, to be fair, some of the evolutions in here are the same thing as Kirby 64. Like, uh, this one, Clutter Needle. Clutter Needle is Needle plus Needle from Kirby 64. That's what that is. Uh, it's just a bunch of random junk rather than just, like, needles. Uh. But, hmm... I'm just... Oh, and with, like, fire and stuff like that, if I bring fire back out... Like, you can do this. These are, like, the two main things you can do with fire. In really early Kirby games, you had separate powers called fire that did this, and burning that did this. Uh, but as of Kirby Superstar and onward, like, they were combined into the same power. Uh, and, you know, it's it's good. Because you can go quick and you can also if you want to. Great. Uh, but because they're essentially on the same button and it's just like if you're in the air, it's very easy to not boost when you want to go fast and just start walking very slowly while spewing fire. Um, the controls are extremely context sensitive and extremely simplified. Uh, and not in a good way. <laughs> like, in other Kirby games, you would always do the power you wanted to do because you knew the button inputs you had to do, and you would do them, and you'd get what you want. Uh, here, not always. It's just... I just, I just have a lot of... A, a lot of disappointment about almost every aspect of this game, and it just makes me sad. I do, I do like that some of these evolutions actually give you side grades and more options, like how the toy hammer and the wild hammer are both worth using depending on the situation. You might want to be able to whack really quickly, or you might want to whack really hard. Uh, like, having those options is nice. Uh, I would like more of the things in the game to have those options. Because here you've got regular sword, you've got giga uh, gi gi gigant? Gigant sword. And, like, gi gigant sword is just better. Like, it's a bit slower, but it's worth it because it's so much more damaging. <laughs> it's not a side grade, it's just a regular upgrade. Uh, and I'm guessing, yeah, this one, see, the power goes up, the speed does not change. So, like, wh why would you bother to ever use the regular tornado again? Similar deal here, look, all the stats go up with pencil drill, and then up again with twin drill. Hmm. I also think, uh, coupling the, the different stats with the different, like, skins, essentially isn't the best decision because this one is more fun to look at and this one has you know the classic the, the classic this is what hammer looks like to it so you really want to play with one of these ones but this one has more damage and you have to look like that if you want that power uh, you can't for example equip the wild hammer's stats but look like you're holding a toy hammer that's not allowed even though you, you would know what's going on because you were the one who set up that situation and enemies' powers are not affected by any of this. <sighs> just, just a shame. Let's see what Frosty Ice is. Can skip this cutscene? There you go. It, uh... I, I've got the, the the head of a seal on on my head. Okay, so it's, uh, this one makes snowmen, I guess. Uh, that is actually different. 
Like, a lot of these don't do anything different when they level up, but this one uh, does actually create these objects, which you can kick along, and presumably that will damage enemies. But that's... that that is actually, like, not the same as the base power. But it does mean there's no reason to use the base power, because the stats are better, and you get that extra bonus effect. So... I don't know, I, like, if I were designing these, I would have tried to make them all side grades rather than upgrades, but they clearly haven't done that. Sometimes it's a bit of a trade-off, but often it's literally just, here is a better version of the power you had before, in, in all respects, just use this instead. It's just not interesting. <sighs> it's just like a go-do busy work before continuing with the main game tax, almost. Uh, which is exactly what the green stars were in 3D World. <laughs> uh, especially the mystery box ones, which is exactly the, the way you get the, the rare stones in this game, which look like stars. So, yeah. Uh, this has been a sad and bitter video. Um, I hope you, you managed to enjoy this more than, than I. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Uh, the ice power does have the, like, slide along while making an ice force field. Which looks like this. But the way you do that is to mash the button. Why? What? Why is that how you do it? I don't even know if that's what it was like in other Kirby games. It's just bad. If it, if it was like that in other Kirby games, that was bad too. It's it's just not good controls. <sighs> oh, this is weird too. You, you you can't go underwater in this game. Kirby has this like little flotation ring all the time. In most Kirby games, you know, you jump in some water, Kirby will, like, grow an adorable snorkel and goggles and just start swimming around underwater. Uh, and, like, most powers don't work underwater, but some of them do, and those ones are usually have quite advantageous for having the ability to work underwater. In this one, you just can't dive. You, you, you just stay on the surface. I, I don't know why. <laughs> Because again, in 3D World, you, you can dive, you can swim underwater, and that's clearly the game that they were inspired by, so... I, I don't understand many of the decisions that have been made here. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anyway, that's Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Um, Yeah, if this game looks like something you would enjoy, then please play it. Uh, I'm just trying to convey why it's not something that I've enjoyed, I guess. Uh, and hopefully, uh, that might give you some insight, I suppose, or it might inspire you to just go play this game. Because, you know, maybe it's not going to be a problem for you, the things I've mentioned. Or maybe, you know, if you just don't think that they're bad things in the first place, you just disagree with me, which is also fine. You can disagree with me. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, that's that's uh that's all I gotta say, I think. I haven't tried using amiibo with this game, I'm kind of reluctant to. <laughs> oh, also the difficulty selection, this makes no sense. Like the only difference between these options is that Kirby has a larger health bar in Spring Breeze mode. Th th that that's it. Like the damage doesn't change. Uh, Kirby, like, the damage you deal and the damage you take do not change. It doesn't make any of the timers longer. It doesn't really seem to help you with anything apart from giving you a bit more health. And while, you know, I applaud accessibility options, it, it feels tacked on. It feels like they didn't really design the game with this in mind. Uh, just... 
because it has such a limited impact. Again, like, to compare and contrast with Super Mario Odyssey, because that's what I do, but when you switch on assist mode in Odyssey, uh, you have a bigger health bar to start with. When you stand still for a little while, you regenerate health. When you fall off a hole instead of dying, you get bubbled and you get portaled back to the surface after taking a little damage. All of the timers in the game are a bit longer. There's like a lot of things that change uh, in assist mode. There's also arrows, I think, pointing you towards where you should be going next. It helps you like with the tricky parts of exploration, I suppose. And yeah, this game doesn't have any of that. Uh, it's got essentially an assist mode that doesn't really do anything. Um, which seems like a bizarre thing to just sort of tack on. Uh, especially, like, this game is not very hard, so I, I don't really think adjusting your, your base health by a tiny bit really makes a big difference. But again, you know, I'm pretty good at games, so if you're not pretty good at games, it, maybe it is a big difference. So, yeah. it just feels like they could have done more. Anyway. Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Uh, I was really, really hoping to get this, like, amazing open world... Kirby in a destroyed Metropolis experience. That that's the way it felt from the trailers and things, but it's not that. It, it's 3D World. It's Super Mario 3D World. But uh, Mario is pink now. Also spherical. <laughs> also, there's just some like weird mechanics thrown in from I don't know wherever. <laughs> Again, like if you're gonna love, if you if you do love this game, or if you if it looks like a game you would love, play it and love it. And I'm not saying you can't, but I don't. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you for watching. I hope me being basically bitter and disappointed for an hour was enjoyable. <laughs> uh. That's all I gotta say, I guess. Uh, bye. <laughs>